Hi Amen, Nigel here with you and uh, this is a bit of an unusual surrounding I know. Uh, those of you that don't know I have a modelling channel, scale modelling, which is where you can see all the plastic scale models behind me. This is what we call in the modelling world, this is what's called a stash. Well, this is part of my stash and uh, this is what we do. We tend to go and buy models and just put them on a shelf and not build them. Yeah, strange isn't it? Anyway, um, I did, I'm doing a quick video for you tonight. It's 11 o'clock at night. It's uh, Wednesday night. Wednesday the... was it the 7th today? Yeah, 7th of April 2021. And um, I've had a delivery from uh, a certain lovely gentleman who resides in a Welsh countryside in the United Kingdom. And um, yeah, he's, uh, I've, I've, I ordered some bits off him and he sent them to me. And uh, they're all beautifully packaged up. So I thought I'd do an unboxing. An unboxing video is, as you know, it's basically getting everything out of the box and, and seeing what it's like. And it's also a good way of showing how these suppliers package their things and how good they, uh, how good they send it to you. So um, without further ado, we'll get on with it. But first of all, I'll show you. This is one box and it's quite heavy. You see on the end, we've got the name. A certain Win Lewis 4x4 products. And there you can see, these aren't sumo bars. Um, sumo bars are, if you don't know, the steering arms and everything for uh, Land Rovers. And they don't come in kit form, hence this won't be sumo bars because it's not quite long enough. If you want to see the sumo bars, go back a few months. I did a review on them because I bought them ages ago and haven't used them yet. But um, this is the box and this is how it comes. And basically Gwen wraps everything up in this lovely black or maybe his daughter does all the work and he just talks a lot about it, I don't know. I'm sure you'll tell me. Um, but this is uh, basically the box wrapped up in a beautiful thick black vinyl um, to keep everything dry. And then we've got another box down here, which weighs a ton, and it's another big one. So, and it's another Gwyn Lewis one. And again, it's wrapped up in that black vinyl. Thanks, Katie. I'm sure it's her that's doing it all. So what we'll do, as in normal sort of scale modelling world, what we do is we talk to you like this and then um, we flip the camera over and we look down at the bench which is just in front of me so we can look at what's in the boxes and, uh, and go from there. So this video, if you're not interested in seeing products, then switch off. But all this is, is just a video to show you what I've got, what I've bought, what's out there, what's available and what you're going to be seeing me put on my Land Rover in the few in the next few weeks, months, whatever, days, I don't know. But um, I feel quite guilty. I'm doing this indoors because it's cold and everything. And when I watch um, poor old Tom digging around under his Land Rover, I think he lives on the top of a hill in the windiest part of the world. <laughs> and then you've got Sophie out there in all sorts of weather with her dog bloody, I don't know how she manages, but I suppose she's young so she can put up with it. So um, anyway, I'm in the warmth of my home at my bench and having a look at some bits. So let's have a look at what they are. Right anyway, guys, here we can see this is a, an old cutting mat that we use for modelling and everything. So um, basically, there's a box, there's one box. And I'll get a knife here, which is handy because we've got all sorts of sharp knives and drills and paints and all sorts of stuff. So um, I honestly can't remember what I ordered because... We spoke about what I wanted to get and, and Gwyn advises me on what I should get and what's what's sort of applicable and stuff. Because these Pumas, they're a little bit different. Um, Pumas have a few little differences from all the others that a lot of people don't know about. That I won't go into now, but I will go into as I cover the, the build. Um, and I must be honest, there's a, there's, a few, there's a few differences that are obvious. But there's, uh, there's a few differences that I found out from Gwyn, because obviously he's in the know. So this is one thing I knew I do remember ordering, and this is about it. And it comes from Australia, because it's designed in Australia. Yeah, I'll shut up. It's designed and engineered in Australia. So uh, this is Super Bro Suspension Bushes. And now apparently this is everything I've heard from, from Gwyn. Um, you can buy standard Land Rover bushes, okay? and you can fit them into your arms but apparently the original quality rubber bushings that you get these days tend to be not quite as good as the genuine OEM Land Rover ones were so the best bet is if you've got worn bushings is the best bet is to fit these now my bushes weren't worn 
10 years old, 16,000 miles. There was no wear in it. Well, the, the, there was a little bit of tearing in a couple of them. But my experience, I used to have a Defender before and I fitted um, polyurethane bushes to that and it absolutely changed the ride completely. Um, so I wanted to put these bushes in here. The other reason I wanted these is, is there's two main reasons. One of them's very slight, but the other one is pretty major. If you're one of these that goes off gallivant all over the place and you get a, um, a radius arm bush fail, and you've got the standard Rover bushes, you knackered. You ain't gonna get them out. On the, I mean, you can't get them out with a 10 ton press. So you saw the video of me getting them out where I welded them up and everything. So the beauty of these brushes, these bushes is a couple of spanners, you can change them on the side of the road. So, you know, you could buy a set of these and then if you are gonna go trekking across Europe, whatever, you can buy yourself a spare set and change them on the side of the road. Whereas with the standard Rover bushes, you can't. The other thing is with these, whenever you do any work on suspension, if you're into your vehicles, you should know this, and if you don't, okay, um, with the rubber bushings, you have an outer metal sleeve, which is in the arm, you have an inner metal sleeve, which is clamped up by the bolt, and in between there, you've got the vulcanized rubber. Now, when this, if, this, if my arm is the suspension arm, and you jack the car up, okay, the bolt stays still, and then the rubber twists like this. So you undo the bolt, you change the bush and the rubber springs round. And then what you do is you put it all back together and you clamp everything up. And then when you let the car back down, the suspension arm goes back up and this rubber is constantly being twisted. Okay, and I see it happen on YouTube videos all the time. Okay, and people say, you know, they, they talk everything up and then they let the car down. And those bushes are constantly under stress. So you're constantly loading your suspension, you're continually loading your suspension, and that arm always wants to spring back. It's almost like a, a weak torsion bar. Well, the trouble is then, when the arm goes up to full, full um, bump, okay, you're more than likely gonna tear that bush out because you've actually, you've set it here, you've clamped it solid, now it's going to normal ride height, and then it's gonna go to full bump, and you can actually rip the rubbers out. So. You should always torque your rubbers. Don't, you know, just do the bolts finger tight, let the vehicle down, let it settle on its ride height, and then torque everything up with everything settled down. Now, it doesn't really matter with a Land Rover on the front, um, on the front arms, okay? But everything else does because the panel rod, all that, everything twists as it goes down. So remember that. With these bushes, it doesn't matter. So therefore, on the other side of that, if you have got lots of articulation in your suspension, with these bushes, it's all just going to twist and there's no preload going on. It's just all sliding in, in, in one, inside one another. They're not wrenching. So this is basically... This is kit 0043DK, which is for the late Puma. Be careful when you're buying these bushes. Um, with the Pumas, there's an early and a late Puma. Um, mine's a 2011 and it's late. Basically, look under the back of your Land Rover. Look at your front mountings on your A-frame. You, if you've got welded on crow's feet and M16 bolts, just get a caliper and measure the end of the bolts, then that's the later kit. And then I think there's also earlier ones which have bolt on crow's feet with a three quarter UNF bolt. Um, so make sure you actually get the right ones. And actually, while I'm here, when I think of it, be very, very careful. If you use LR Workshop, um, I'm, I'm compiling a list and I'm going to tell him all about it. So I'm not talking behind his back. I think his name is Chris, but he's got a listings of all the bits and pieces that you get for your Land Rover, all the bolts and everything. And I've been looking and for example, it says that the bolts that go through the A-frame at the other end are um, five eighths or nine sixteenths UNF or something. And they're not, they're metric. Um, and then you've got other, but you've got the radius arm bolts at the back. It says there. They're um, 5 8 UNF and they're not, they're 16 mil. So um, be very, very careful. If you've got a Puma, be very careful what parts you're buying because you'll look at parts list, you'll see exploded diagrams and you may end up getting the wrong bolts and the wrong bits and pieces. So you might get the wrong bushes for the wrong bolts as well. So just be very, very careful. If you're in Puma world, be careful what you're getting. So as I say, this is kit 0043DK and this is basically, look, Hang on, then we're okay. I thought that was an invoice. In here, we've got a thank you from Super Pro. So this kit was assembled by Mel. Thanks, Mel. And uh, on the 22nd of January 21, so it's a fairly recent assembly. 
So in here, this is the kit 0043, so we've got our front panel rod bushings, we've got our front radius arm to chassis mounts, that's the four big bushings down the bottom. We've got front radius arm to axle mountings, standard settings so they're not adjusted caster. Rear trailing arm upper bushes, that's the ones I was just talking about. Rear radius arm to axle mounting. Rear radius arm to chassis mounting. So basically that's a lot of bushes in there and also I see we've got all the kits, we've got all the washers. Don't come with any bolts or anything but we've got grease in every one so that's handy because we've always got a spare sachet of grease in case we get a squeaky bush. The squeaky bushes are not what we want is it guys. Also available from Super Pro for your Land Rover. You've got corrector, uh, caster corrected um, arm to axle mountings, anti roll bar, um, anti roll bar rubbers, I call them, I don't know, bushes, um, front, uh, shock sor front shock absorber, upper lower, front shock absorber, upper lower, um, rear anti roll bar, rear anti roll bar, it's all shock absorber, anti roll bar bushes. So in here, this kit, and you can buy all this separately for Gwyn, but it's more advantageous cost-wise to buy it separately, uh, to buy it in a kit. So there's our panard rod brush kit. So we've got four bushes there, two either end, and the steel sleeves in the middle, and then we've got the lovely tube of grease. And then here we've got the radius arm to chassis mount. So these are basically the ones that go, that come up from your arms up into the chassis. And these are, they make a hell of a difference, I think, to the ride, because they're a lot more um, pliable. And then you've got your radius arm to diff mount kit. So radius arm to diff mount kit, radius arm to front axle I think they mean, so that's the front axle so you've got your four bushes there and your four tubes and again you've got the um, the lovely tube of grease in there and then here we've got the upper arm to chassis mounts, these are the ones that are going to be critical for your early or late uh, Puma. Then we've got here, bad boys, these are the rear radius arm to chassis mounts and you can see here you've got the the uh, polyurethane bushes there with the plates and the great big washers and everything. So that's all looking very, very good indeed. And you've got your tubes in there as well. So if yours are all rusty and grotty like mine are, then uh, good opportunity to put some nice fresh ones in a bit of bling. And then finally in the box, we've got the lower arm to diff mount bushes. So these are the rear lower arms going down. Again, be careful with these because on an 8 Puma, they're 16 mil. But the, as I say, I've seen them called out as 58 UNF. So that's that little lot. So we'll put that away and we'll get another box out. Okay, so here we are back again looking at a big black box. Um, I've just had a look on the internet and written down some prices. So the actual price of the full bush kit, as I just showed you, for I think it's the most expensive one for the later Puma, it comes out at 231.60 for all of those bushes I just showed you, which isn't bad at all um, when you when you look at the price of all the bushes individually. And as I say, don't don't confuse those bushes with some other commonly available bushes which happen to be yellow in colour, um, because they are not. I can tell you from my days of working with cars, track cars and stuff, Super Pro bushings are you know, I would say the two the, the, the two bush manufacturers I would use on any car are um, Super Pro and White Line. Um, a lot of the others I wouldn't touch with a barge pole. I've had bad experiences with them. I'm not going to name them, but I do know that with Land Rovers on my I do that on my 1984 Defender I had. I had bushes on there that were orange in colour, and the Panard rod bushes would last. We'll put it this way, every three, every MOT, I had to replace the panel rub bushes. And in the end, I just put standard rubber ones in there. Um, because they were basically, they were awful. So, anyway, let's have a look at here. Right, now in here is a load of stuff. You've got this piece of cardboard here. Now, this piece of cardboard is designed to fit just behind the number plate, just below the, uh, just inside the rear light unit. Okay, so that's my invoice. So he's have, thank you very much. They've covered that up so that when I open the box, you don't all see where I live and come and give me money and stuff. So in here is a tube of grease. Um, I know that because they said they were going to send me one because they like me, because they think I'm nice. And um, I suppose somebody asked you, don't know, not many people do. So here <laughs> we go. Um, anyway, this grease, Morris Lubricants, 
uh, K48 body grease, it's a black grease and it is absolutely awesome apparently. Uh, I've now got two or even three tubes of it and yeah apparently it is absolutely amazing stuff. Um, I think Gwyn uses this in basically everything and one bit of advice he's given to me to pass on, which I will pass on and I will do, when you fit these polyurethane bushes, I'm pointing out you can't see, when you fit these polyurethane bushes that are over there, if you cover the bolts in this grease and also get, get it down inside the steel tubes as well, inside the steel tube and then you'll never have a problem. When I bought my Land Rover brand new, um, as I said this so many times, the first day I had it, stripped everything, wax oiled it, copper slipped all the bolts, everything came apart, nothing broke. Um, I, I think I'm right in saying the only thing that broke when I stripped my Defender completely was one of the um, studs in the rear axle that holds the diff on. I think that's the only bolt that actually snapped. But anyway, that stuff there, you get it from Gwyn, it's bloody awesome, K48 Molly Grease, it's amazing stuff. Apparently, this piece of cardboard here now, this is designed for a step tub. You see, right? So, let's do the easy stuff first. This is the Gwyn Lewis Brit Park um, gift bolt kit with the special socket. Now, if you're into your defenders, you've already seen this. This is the special socket. Um, it's got that funny name on it. So this is the special socket, which I've never had, but apparently this just makes life so much easier. Uh, it's half inch drive. You've got the hole in there for the ball, so it's not going to fall off the end of your ratchet. But it allows you to get around the UJs and everything and do the bolts up. It's nine, it's nine sixteenths on the end, not 14 mil. And it's, it's basically designed to, um, to get around the UJs and everything rather than using spanners. We've all had it where we slip and everything. So uh, there we go. So that's um, that's that. I'm sure it is 9 16th because these bolts are 3 8 UNF. They're not N10 fine, are they? No, they're 3 8 UNF. So um, that is actually a set there. So you get that special socket there, which if you're into defenders, you've already got. If you're not into defenders, I, I would seriously suggest you get one because it just makes life so much easier. So this is the nut and bolt kit for the front prop. Now bearing in mind, if you're buying uh, Gwyn's um, special props, then you get nuts and bolts anyway, so you just buy the spanner. But uh, this is the nuts and bolts for the front pop, so you can replace all them if you've happened to round them off or they've all gone rusty. And then these are the ones for the rear. Remember, you've got these extra long ones here that go through the actual, um, through the drum brake and the flange. I won't be reusing any of these bolts, but I will use all the nuts because they're new nylocks. So um, all of my bolts can go on, they're back on, they're absolutely fine. So uh, that's that set there. And that little lot there with the VAT um, is £27.60. And that is code number GL1097. So not bad for all that little lot there. I think the, the tool on its own is, is, is nearly 20 quid, isn't it, I think? So uh, yeah, not bad at all. So um, 2760, this piece of cardboard here, this goes just underneath the fuel tank if you've got an early uh, series Land Rover. Right, um, this box here, ooh, I don't know what that is. This is another must have if you're doing a rebuild on your Land Rover um, because the ones they put on the factory basically are bollocks, absolute crap. So these are the aftermarket turret rings. They're zinc plated and everything. I'm going to give them a good art, good, good art, <laughs> a good solid thrashing with wax oil before they go on, and I give all the all the, the, the studs a good going over with copper slip uh, or the grease. Um, but this is actually um, this is GL1053, and these are the heavy duty turret rings. These, if you don't know, they go up underneath your chassis, and then you're your big cone that your um, shock absorber goes with bolts on the top of there. But the ones that Land Rover use are basically pressed steel and the studs can quite easily rip out of them if you over tighten them. They rust for a past time. You know, if you take it all apart for what these cost, change them. He does a DIY set as well that you can put together yourself and weld and paint and everything. But really, you know, he's welded them up. He's had them all zinc plated. God, <laughs> you know, why, why save a couple of quid just to do it all yourself? So that they are twenty nine pounds and four pence. Um, four pence. <laughs> I sound like an old man. I am an old man. 
So GL1053, £29.04, and, and they are really, really good. And it says on that piece of paper, do not over tighten. Um, don't don't over tighten the nuts either. So um, there we go. So they're well worth having. Um, while we're on the subject of that with suspension, you will see that I'm not buying uprated suspension or anything for my Land Rover. The reason is what I plan here and now is to build it standard so you all see it go back together stock. This is the chassis. And then I think I'm going to have, have to have a telephone conversation with Gwyn because I want to give it a sort of six, eight inch uh, lift and have 40 inch tyres on it. No, I, I would like to give it a little lift and have some, say, 35 inch tyres on it. Um, but um, I'm going to put it all back together stock, first of all, so you see it all goes, how it goes back together. And then we'll look at what we're going to do after that. So um, this here is the packaging that came with those rings, which I don't need anymore. So that can go in the bit. No, I won't put it in the bin. I'll recycle it. I'll put it over there for recycling. This here, oh, Jesus. I don't know what that is. Ah, another piece of cardboard. This piece of cardboard here goes underneath the footwell on the passenger side of a Series 1. Okay? Right. So this here, I don't know what that is. Now we're into all these. If, if, you've, if you follow Tom, you'll have seen he's fitted these already. So I've got the, I've got the front, the mid and the rear is what I call them. So this is the front outrigger and bulkhead mud shields. Now, I'm going to get this under the light so you can see it GL1010 and this is basically if you can see in that image these are going to screw into the back of your if whatever your Land Rover you've got you've got a, a lining inside the wheel arch and it may be galvanized it may be plastic whatever it may be both um, this will bolt in there and it will protect your front outrigger. If you remember in the last video I showed you the state that your front outrigger can get in. And that is due to the fact that all the mud and the crap goes up there, builds up, and then you've got the added, all the stone chips going up there as well, chipping all the paint, and it's all just sat there, and then you get some salt which keeps it all damp, and it just rots through in no time. These will actually, they won't prevent it, because if you're going to go digging around in quarries where there's slurry and everything, you're going to get the mud up there. What this is going to prevent is for daily, daily you know, use, it's going to stop all the crap getting splashed up there by the front wheels. And um, I've seen people say, oh no, they're no good. They hold the crap in. No, they don't. If you hose it out, they won't hold the crap in. What they do is they stop the crap getting up there in the first place. And the trouble is that area, that front outrigger, if you didn't see it, go back to my last video and I showed you on the strip chassis and over the, I overlaid a picture of a rotten one and it's just designed, to, it's an awful design for corrosion. It is terrible, but it is just such a trap where all the mud and shit and stones and crap, salt, dead birds, hidden money, drug stashes, whatever, can get hidden up in there and it just rots its way through and these will actually stop anything splashed because these are basically going to go in, in your in your Land Rover and your tires going around here and it's just throwing everything or throwing everything up in there and it's just going to stop that so that's what they're for at the moment I'm not going to unwrap them you can see we've got all stainless steel fittings down here big heavy heavy duty self tapper screws and everything you see in there but this is GL1010 and um, as you can see full colour instructions you've also got everything online as well if you want to go to the website and have a look um, but you can see this is um, this is just twenty seven pounds sixty, and it's a it's a kind of flexible vinyl material. It's not like a rubber. It's 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 shiny. It doesn't scratch easily. Um, it's a very, very it's almost like a softer version of a number plate material, if you like. But uh, yeah, very very nice job. So I'm looking forward to getting them in there to protect all my lovely paint and wax oil and everything because I'm a big girl's blouse. So uh, that's those, GL1010, £27.60. Got to be worth every penny. I mean, you, you could make it yourself with a cardboard template and that, what's the point? For £27.60, you may as well just get those. Um, this piece of cardboard here is designed to sit on top of the fuel tank in a uh, 300 TDI 90. Um, so here we have got, this is GL, one zero one two um sorry have i got one two or one three i've got one three okay so this is for a step tub and a square tub and if you don't know what i mean 
if you look at pictures of a Defender, you may be able to see it in here. Here we go. If you look up under your wheel arch, okay, this is looking, basically, if you can imagine you are the wheel and your head is on top of the tyre, okay, this is looking back, all right? So this is basically, you're looking back at the, this is the inside of the rear lights here. And you can see this tub comes out, goes up, and then comes in again. And a lot of the later Pumas have got this step tub. Mine doesn't, it's a van, it's just got this straight square tub. So if you've got an early, you know, a TDI or an early TD5, or, you know, an old 84, 90, whatever, you'll have this type of square tub where it's just, the tub comes along the floor, up the sides, up the top. So if you sit in, in the back, you're sat on a step. The later Pumas have this step tub. If you want to see what I'm talking about, look at Tom's videos. Tom has the step tub and it's also got this steel stiffener and everything in there. It's for the seat mountings. That's what it's for. So you can see the different shape. This one here goes around the step tub. This one here goes around the square. So this kit what I've got here is GL1013 and this kit is GL1012. The cost of these is £36 and I think the one two was the same price. So basically what you're getting in here again is you've got these plastic, or these vinyl type covers. So this is going to go over all your light units and everything. Yes, Land Rover fit them themselves. They're in there, but they do go off. They go very, very hard and they don't fit as well as these. Um, and this one here is to prevent mud and shit and everything getting splashed up into your rear cross member. Now, if you've been following my channel, you will know that my chassis was in very good condition rust wise because I wax sawed it all however all the external welds and everything had rusted and you know that my rear cross member was a bit of a mess in the ends where it had been attacked by the the stones and the shit and everything splashing up off the wheels so these plates here actually go in and cover that opening in the bulkhead in the bulkhead in the cross member so as when you're looking back that's the inside of your rear cross member and that there is all open and the mud and shit can go in there and sit in there and block in. Again, I've seen people say these can actually trap the mud in there. Yes, they could. Yes, they could trap the mud in there. But also, without having them, you're not going to get as much go, as, as much mud going up in there. If you're going to go in the quarries and play in the slurry and everything, then yeah, you need to hose them out. But it, as far as just day-to-day -day usage goes, you know, running up and down the road and... and bit of gentle green lane or whatever these are going to stop a lot of the crap that would normally get up in there and stay in there it's going to stop it going in so again you've got these four fitting instructions all color images which are very very nicely done or you don't even get that with brit part if you buy a brit part um bulkhead removal set kit which is what i'm going to get you get this in black and white so Gwyn's doing better than that so um there you go so that's that kit there gl1013 and that is as I say, £36. So here we've got the plates which go over the, the bulkhead. You've got that square half cut out there. So obviously there's going to be something in the instructions. We can cut that out. That's probably if you've got a tow bar. Um, and then you've got these panels here which go on the top. And again, it's this sort of, I don't know, it's four millimetres thick, is it? It looks about four millimetres. It looks thicker than three. It is three millimetres, blimey. Uh, so it's three millimetre, this vinyl material, and it's lovely. Um, again, all those stainless steel fittings down there look like stainless steel. So uh, there we go. So that's that little set there. And then finally, piece de resistance is this set here. Now, now I know what these are. This is what I call this piece of cardboard here is just packaging. Um, this is what I call the middle set. This is the intermediate set. Let's get this bloody big box out of the way. Bye. There we go. Right, so this is what I call the intermediate set, and this is something that also I think is very important for me particularly because mine had a leak. I've never managed to find it, but if I went for a drive and it was particularly wet, I'm not just talking about wet roads, I'm talking about deep puddles, I would get the you know the metal shelf area that sits behind the seats. Uh, it's the sort of the most forward part of the rear tub where it bolts to the seat box that area there would get water in it I never ever found the leak and I still can't see the bloody leak now even though I've got all in bits But this actually goes up inside your tub again This is for the square box wheel arch one and this goes up inside the um, tub and it sits 
you know where you've got the round tube coming out of your chassis and the bracket going up the bolts to the the bolts to the, the tub this goes up in there and it prevents all the crap and stones and everything chipping the living delights out of there so here we go Doop -de -doop. so this is you can see this is the square tub and this is the step tub I've got the square tub version that's the step tub version there all right and this goes basically sitting in front of the wheel arch there's your shock absorber so it's stopping all the crap and everything building up in there so if you've got an older Land Rover it's going to keep the back of your fuel tank clean and stop all the crap building up on the top of there as it does um, and if you've got a later Defender like I have a Puma or TD5 or, or Land Rover with the rear the tank in the rear like a long wheelbase then this is going to stop all that crap and everything building up around there and the stones and everything off your big muddy chunky tires beating the living daylights out of all your paintwork and everything so um yeah this is this is GL1019 so this is square rear tub and that's step rear tub and it's for a TDCI um County Station Wagon, I forgot what that stands for, in 2007 onwards. So there we go. Um, so again, all these lovely printed out in colour instructions. And I don't know if you noticed that, but you can see here, I mean, it is absolutely so thorough, the descriptions he's put in here. It's really, really nice. But if you look in that piece of packaging here, I'm going to show you what you get. You can tell by the way it banged. It's heavy because it's, it's all metal. here we have got this is all the galvanized bracketry <clears throat> now I would suggest painting this I would I wouldn't suggest just leaving it a lot of people think galvanized is great and it is for like fire escapes and stuff some railings but when it's in an environment like this is going to be in and constantly being battered by stones salt and shit and muck and everything I'd give it a good coat of paint just to give it a bit of a barrier um, or even powder coat it if you can but this is basically then these are the brackets here these brackets here are going to actually mount the actual thing the actual guards themselves and then you've got these brackets here we've all seen them there's that I'll, I'll show you in the next video there's that pressed steel L bracket that goes between the wheel arch and the actual um, inside of the tub and it supports the front of the wheel arch and stop all the actually where the sill goes and it stops it all flapping about this replaces that and as you can see it's a proper piece of like three mil steel it ain't going to go anywhere and it's galvanized mine is as i say 10 years old never really been off road um and they're absolutely rotten they're zinc plated from the factory but they're rotten on mine and i'd have to replace them so i thought well i may as well get this set and replace it with something decent instead of the poxy bit of tin so this is out of all the splash guards go this is the most complex set and as you can see here you've got your actual guards themselves bags of nuts and bolts brackets for fitting the guards and then those brackets there so um there you go so full set of instructions you've got a bit of drilling to do a little bit some nuts and bolts no rivets or anything don't forget when you're drilling through your body um make sure you paint and i would seriously suggest putting something on the back of these panels to stop the um the reaction with the aluminium and the steel and also I would plaster it in wax oil before you get it together and then when you squeeze it together it's got a wax oil sandwich in there and um, as you will see with my body when we start working on the bodywork you know where you've got the three tie downs down each side of the body of the back I took them out wax oil around the bolts put paint around the holes bolted it all back together ten years later took it all apart it's still all lovely so it's worth uh, it's worth taking the time to do but quite a comprehensive little set of instructions there I will show you how to fit it 100% when I um, when I actually do it and I may actually even do this on the tub before I fit it back on the on the Land Rover because while it's on its wooden frame it's, it's sat on some wooden casters it's much easier to get to without the wheels and axles and everything in the way so I may do that and make it easier to film as well so there we go guys this set here this is yeah it's not cheap it's 78 pounds um but when you think you've probably got rotten brackets here anyway and it's going to prevent all your chassis and everything from getting covered in rust and 
stone chips and God knows what. And if you, as I say, if you've got an earlier one, it's going to protect your, um, your fuel tank as well. So there we go, guys. That is that, I'm afraid. And this here is my invoice. And I'm not going to show you. Because, um, yeah. Anyway, so as I say, today... Just about today still. Today is Wednesday the 7th of uh, April 2021. And I have today sent um, Mr Ashcroft uh, a fairly large sum of money. Yeah, um, a very large sum of money. So I've got some diffs coming. And they should be here tomorrow. So again, we'll do an unboxing for them. So I'll see you all for that. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. As I say, get on over to Gwyn Lewis. GwynLewis.com greenlewis.co.uk sorry have a look on there there's lots and lots of stuff that you can buy really unusual stuff it's it's not like craddocks and and paddocks and everybody else that just sells everything the same he's got some really nice different stuff and i like these things and uh, yeah really really good stuff really really good products love dealing with Gwyn. he's a really nice bloke very professional and uh full of help and advice as well don't ring him up and ask him you know um how you fit a set of spark plugs to a td5 diesel engine because they don't have them but um <laughs> you can ring him up for some advice on his products and i'm sure he'd be all too willing to help you anyway thanks for uh, thanks for watching guys and i will see you all probably tomorrow with another video and um once this cold wet windy weather goes away again then we'll get back on the project so uh i've pretty much got everything i need now to get going thanks for watching guys i'll see you all soon bye for now